the series of Throne to the Throne, the Joseph story, is actually not Joseph's story. It's actually the story of Jacob. That in the beginning, you will, you will see that it is presented that this is the account of Jacob, as written by Moses in Genesis that started in chapter 37. The story of Jacob is rarely talked about. The story of Joseph is more talked about, and the story of Abraham even is even more talked about. Sandwiched between these two is actually, uh, right smack in the middle rather, of these two very famous people is Abraham and Joseph. Two people are sandwiched in the middle that we rarely talk about, Isaac and Jacob. And did you know that if you know these four people, you more or less know the history and the forefathers of the Christian faith? Because they are the basis of who the introduction of the God that we have is. That when you hear you say, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So if Jacob is one of them who's very right smack in the center of those top 10 famous superheroes, if we can say superheroes of the Bible, why is it that Jacob is rarely talked about? So that is what our conversation today is going to be. And right through the in-betweens, of uh, the story of Joseph, we will have like intermission Sundays where we will be able to talk about the other characters who are part of the whole Joseph story. And what, where else is the best place to start than the story of Jacob, the father of Joseph? Rarely do we hear about the, the story of Jacob simply because his life is not something that we should emulate. He is a person that more or less you do not copy simply because of the life that he had lived. But at the end, he is still part of the Hebrews Hall of Faith that says that he is one of those faithful believers in the Christian faith. And I have entitled it, The Tale of Two Brothers, simply because you cannot talk about Jacob without talking about his twin brother. Yes, there are two in our story today. Jacob and Esau are the children of Isaac. And we will then understand how their story unfolded and the important truth that we will be able to capture from their story. So with a tale of two brothers, we will start with Genesis chapter 25, because the story of Jacob, just to tell you how important it is, runs through from Genesis 25 all the way to Genesis chapter 50, which encompasses half of the book of Genesis, just to tell us how important this person is really to the story of salvation that God has presented for us. So a tale of two brothers, starting off with Genesis chap chapter 25, will give us this very simple truth. Very simple that a lot of times we do not put any importance on it. And that truth is this, that our consequence, that our choices have consequences. We are faced with choices every day, every moment of our lives. Just this afternoon, before you came to church, I am sure you went through your wardrobe, opened it, and looked. What am I going to wear? Where did you eat for lunch? When you go to the Hawker Center, it doesn't help if the Hawker Center is very big and there are so many stalls there, and you're presented with choices. But daily, there are those simple little things that we have to choose from. Our young people, which university, which, which college am I going to go to? What school am I going to enroll at? What course am I going to take? Or among my suitors, who am I going to choose? Suitors talaga, eh, no? These are some of the major um, decisions that we have to make in our lives. And the story of Jacob and Esau, in the tale of two brothers, 
Choice has made a very important role in their life that it has now transcended into where we are today. And the journey of faith that they had is going to make a big impact in their lives and in the lives that we have today. And we will start off with verse 19. And as I've mentioned, this is the account of Isaac. Who else do we need to talk about, to, to start with, but the father himself? So Isaac was the son of Abraham. And did you know that Isaac never courted his wife? If you will read the story in Genesis chapter 24, Abraham asked one of his servants to go out into his family because that was, the criteria, that was the only criteria that Abraham gave. I want you to find Isaac a wife who was a God-believing believing woman. That was his only criteria. That's why the, the servant went into the family of Abraham and looked and searched high and low for a woman to be the wife of Isaac. So they got him a wife and Isaac was pleased with Rebekah, who was presented to him. But they had a problem. And what was that? Rebekah, just like her mother-in-law, was barren. She couldn't bear children. And men, allow me to have your attention, please. Because what did Isaac do? The verse said, Isaac pleaded. And I like that word. He did not just pray. He pleaded to God and said, Lord, in behalf of my wife, please give us a child. He could see Rebecca being sad and lonely because during that time, not being able to bear children is a big curse. It is not a simple curse, but it is a major thing because it seems like God has forgotten you if you cannot bear children during that time. So Isaac pleaded with the Lord, Lord, give us a child, Lord, give us a child, Lord, give us a child. And mind you, this is not a simple like he prayed and the following day his prayer was already answered. Lo and behold, Rebecca was pregnant. No, later on in the verse, we will, we will read that it took him 20 years to pray for a child. So if Isaac was 40 when he got married, 60 years old na po siya naging papa. Can you imagine how long? How many of us can stand and wait? How many of us are praying up until now for someone 10 years down the road? Nagtatampo na tayo sa Lord when we feel that He's not listening to us. Two days, 24 hours, uh, 48 hours. Here, Isaac pleaded. And the plea was not done once a day. It was done all the time that he would see his wife. Rebecca is crying again. She's lonely. She doesn't have a child. She cannot bear children. Isaac would go in prayer. Lord, please give us a child. And Isaac pleaded to the Lord for 20 years. And the Lord answered Isaac's prayer. And Rebecca became pregnant. And not with just a child, but with Twins. Not one, but two. Buy one, take one. Ang gift ni Lord sa kanya. The promise of God to Abraham that he was going to be the father of many nations was now going to be done double time. Two children. Twins at that. And there was a problem again. And what was that problem? The children were struggling inside the womb. Struggling, not strangling. So they weren't yet killing each other, but they will eventually. They will try to kill each other, but they said that they were struggling inside the tummy of Rebecca. So this was the first child of Rebecca, and can you imagine? Rebecca was wondering, what in the world is happening inside my stomach? I didn't have twins. My biggest baby was Sarah. Sarah was 7.2, 7 pounds, 2 ounces, that's about 3.3 .3 kg. And I could feel, and I would show Pastor Joey that for, for, our, for our mommies, diba? when the baby is inside and it's up and happy towards the end of your trimester, you'll see it moving like a wave inside you. Like one time they're here and another time they're there. And then you'll see a little bump. If it's a little bump, it's their elbow. I see kunya yan. 
And can you imagine having two of those inside you? And this is the first time the word twins ever appeared in the Bible. So there was still no concept of ultrasound. There was still no concept of x-ray. There was still no concept that a woman can bear two kids inside her tummy at the same time. Do you know that the biggest twins ever born, one was 10, 10 pounds and the other one was 8.7 pounds. Can you imagine how big that was? That's 18 pounds. So that's pretty much half of a, ha, that's almost as heavy as our hand carry. And can you imagine them jostling and moving about inside your stomach? That is why Rebecca could not understand who. So he, she presented herself to the Lord and asked, Why is this happening to me? Yes, Lord, I asked for a baby. But you giving me twins, now I have two people inside of me and I do not understand what's happening inside. And so, God in His kindness responded to Rebecca's plea and had this to say, You will have two sons, God said. Huh? How can that happen? Because remember, this is the first time the concept of twins is happening in the Bible. How can that happen? I can imagine Rebecca uh, having these thoughts in her mind. How can there be two people in me? Those two sons in your womb will become two nations. Ganun po kalaki. Yung pinagbubuntis niya. But he said, from the very beginning, these two nations are going to be rivals. At that onset, Maybe Rebecca, in Rebecca's mind, she was starting to understand, no wonder they keep on struggling inside my stomach. They're fighting right inside there. And this is something that I'd like you to take note of. Continuing with God's reply to Rebecca, she sa he says, one nation will be stronger than the other. Two nations, okay? One nation will be stronger than the other. And your older son, will serve your younger son. I can imagine in Rebecca's mind, she would say, na, 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 na. That's not going to happen. Because in the Jewish society, in the culture of that day, being the panganay, being the eldest, is such a big responsibility. There is such a big task given. There's a big role given to the eldest in the family. And for the older son to serve the younger one is not known during that time in their society. It was not going to happen. Excuse me. It was not going to happen. In Rebecca's mind, I can imagine, no, no, Isaac is not going to allow that. But the prophecy is that. That the older son will serve the younger. And one nation will be stronger than the other. So, now Rebecca understands why all of this turbulent movement inside her tummy was happening. And then when the time came to pass, Rebecca indeed had twins. Imagine with me that as she was delivering her baby with the midwife there, the first baby comes out. And when the first baby comes out, usually, tapos na, diba? Because she already gave birth. There's now a baby. And that baby that came out was very red. I remember when Brian was born, all the people, all the nurses who were, I had a nurse friend there and my doctor was my tita, and they were saying, Maputi ang anak mo. For those who know Brian, you know where I'm coming from, all right? Because he was very red. My Brian is kayumangging kaligatan. Tama ba? Diba? And he was not only red at birth, but he was covered with thick hair. And look what Moses described that hair to be. It was like fur coat. Can you imagine how thick a kind of hair was covering Esau? He was so hairy when they saw him that they nicknamed him Harry. But more importantly, they named him Esau because he was red. So he was so full of hair that Moses described him to be like he was covered with a fur coat. And as the baby Esau was coming out, as the midwife was pulling, her, pulling him out, there was a hand that was clutching the heel of Esau. 
And to the surprise of the midwife, I say, huh, there's another person inside. And true enough, the other twin was born, hand grasping Esau's heel. That's why he was named Jacob. The name Jacob meant heel. So he was holding the heel. But if you know the background of the story earlier, we said that they were jostling and fighting and they were always at odds with each other. It seemed like Jacob was telling Esau, don't go out. I want to go first. I want to go first. So maybe that's the reason why he was pulling on Esau's heel. But his name was going to be like a prophecy of how he was going to be like as he grew up. Because Jacob was always going to try to put one over his brother. And Isaac was 60 years old when the twins were born. 20 years of prayer before his prayer was answered. Genesis 25 verses 27 to 28 describes the twins. So Esau was hairy. As I've said, he was covered, almost co like covered with fur. He was an outdoorsy person. He loved the game. What was the game? Hunting. He would go with Papa to go to the wilderness and hunt for game. What were the game? Baboy damo, deer, wild boar, deer, or all of those wild uh, animals that would be able to like, um, what do you call that? Challenge him. Because Esau was a big, built, man's man, macho, muscle, all over his body, eight-pack abs, and he would like to hunt. And because of that, his ways were crude. He was very rough on the edges, macho, diba? But because of his love for the game, Papa loved him. Because they would go together Train him to hunt. Teach him the ways. Because as I've mentioned earlier, being the eldest, although Esau was just a few seconds older than Jacob, he was still considered the, the oldest because he was the first one to come out. And because of that, Papa would teach him how it was to eventually lead your family when, I, when it is time for me to go. He would take him to the wilderness and that will be teachable moments for them. They would be bonding together. After they kill a deer, they would bring it home, cook it, ask Rebecca to cook it, and they would serve and they would be delighted, talking about their conquest, talking about their successes as far as all of the animals that they were, that they were able to catch is concerned. And that was who Esau was. And who was Jacob? Jacob was smooth. He was fair. And he was a thinker. You will read that he would always go into the, the tents and chat away with people and listen to them. That's why he would be always thinking. But one of the traits that he had was that he was crafty and tricky and sneaky. As compared to Esau, who loved the outdoors, Jacob loved the indoors. Jacob's ways were refined. And mama just loved him. And here we are again, where favoritism was now starting to play its role in the lives of these two boys. And then the story starts about our choices having consequences because the story will unfold before us of a very important choice that Esau was going to make. And the story goes like this. One day, when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau arrived home from the wilderness exhausted and hungry. I can imagine that between Jacob and Esau, the intramurals of brothers would always happen. Jacob, ikaw magwash ng dishes ngayon. I, I was able to catch our food. Jacob, can you get me a glass of water? Jacob, and si little one naman would always be so submissive and always be looking after Kuya and admiring Kuya from afar. Kuya is always something special. That anything that Kuya had was something that I will always want and de delight to have. So this time, Esau comes home, coming from the wild with a, with a deer maybe, and he says, I am exhausted and hungry. And lo and behold, Jacob's mind was just sparkling. Kuya needs something from me. 
Malayo pa po si Iso, pagdating niya, he could already smell the stew that was being cooked by Jacob. And Esau said, I'm starved. Give me some of those stew. Give me some of those red stew. That was, that was the reason why also why Esau is also called Edom, which meant red. And Jacob said, all right, but first, trade me your rights as a firstborn son. I can imagine Esau saying, huh? What does a bowl of stew have to do with my firstborn son rights? Or the birthright? And mind you, it had a lot to do with it. Because the birthright, according to the eldest son, had its perks. And what were those perks? He had twice over the wealth that was going to be distributed among the family. It did not only, it did not only account for wealth, it also accounted for leadership. He would be the leader of the whole clan in the event that the father died. And here, Jacob was going to ask for the rights of the firstborn son. And what did Esau say? Look, I'm dying of starvation. Of course, he wasn't dying. We all know he wasn't dying. And what good is my birthright to me now? Esau, are you serious? Are you serious? Are you seriously asking what good is your birthright to you now? The birthright is something that is not to be traded. The birthright is the natural right of the firstborn son. And it is not given away unless maybe the trade is going to be something better and something bigger. But here, the trade was going to be something that is so huge to something that is very small. Can you imagine Jacob asking Esau to trade me your firstborn rights? How can that match for a bowl of stew and the wealth of Abraham and Isaac that they have been raising and rearing all this time? And mind you, Isaac was wealthy. And it did not only amass for wealth, but this was security in your future, that your family is going to be secured. And you will have a name to carry for your family as the leader of your clan, of your tribe. And here Esau is asking, what good is my birthright to me now? But Jacob proceeds and says, come on, kuya, give me your birthright and I will give you the bowl of stew. And that stew wasn't even oxtail stew. It was a bowl of red lentils. Ngayon, green bean soup, but there's also red lentils, right? And that was the stew that they were trying, that he was trying to get. So what did Esau do? So Esau swore an oath. And during that time, when you swear an oath, it is like you are signing on the dotted line of a contract. Esau swore an oath, selling his rights as the firstborn son to his brother Jacob. And for what? What was the value of his birthright? A bowl of mungo. The King James Version reads it as a morsel of stew. A morsel. Isang kapiranggot compared to the vastness of the inheritance that was due the firstborn son. If this happened now, if I was like the genie, I would like to appear and stop Esau from making this choice and tell him, Esau, Esau, look, do you know what's going to happen in the future? 2,000 years from now, do you know that your family, they will be called Israel? And your nation, Israel, will go through the promised land and they'll be able to land there. They will get the promised land. They will have... And a good relationship with God. And do you know what's going to happen? You will be referred to, your God will be referred to as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. 
And that is the name that you will have, Esau. You will run on through generations and people will speak of your goodness and how good you are as a leader and how good you are as a people and how favored you are as a people. Every war that you will do, you will win. And everything that you, will, everything that you see, the favor of God will always be upon you. Esau, that is your inheritance. But we all know that didn't happen. Because at that point in time, Esau chose to satisfy his now rather than looking forward to what the future has for him. Who would trade their future for a bowl of stew today? Would you? Would you trade your bowl, your future for a bowl of stew? If you knew your future, if you knew what was going to happen in the future, would you trade it for a bowl of stew? You answer, we answer no. But mind you, mga kapatid, every day we do. We do trade the wonderful graces and mercies that God has prepared for us. And we trade it for that momentary pleasure. Of what? A short time of, of thrill? Mahal ko, Tita Barry. Iboborn again ko na lang siya. The choices presented before us daily can define the consequence of our future. It can. Then Jacob gave Esau some bread and lentil stew. And Esau ate the meal, then got up and left. Ganun lang. O sige na nga, sa'yo na. My birthright is yours. He eats, blah, 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 blah. drinks. Okay, tapos na. He just goes. And Esau is said to have con showed contempt for his rights as the firstborn son. He did not value his rights. He did not value the gifts that God had presented before him. He did not value. You say, in the, during the first, the, the early verses, we said that the prophecy was already given. Esau was already said. Jacob was going to, Esau was going to bow to, Joseph, to Jacob because Jacob was going to rule over the, the, the younger, the older brother. That was already given. God already chose. God already declared that that was going to happen. And here Esau is just proving why the choice was that. Because Esau did not put any value to his firstborn rights. Because our choices have consequences. And you know if you will read on to um, verse 27, when Jacob was already old, he started calling his son and said, Esau, come, I want you to get me some game because I might die already and I want to bless you. And we know that Esau went, but Rebekah, hearing the conversation between the father and son, now all of a sudden devised a scheme not to be able to get the birthright alone, but to also get the blessings that was due to Esau. Rebekah told Jacob, Jacob, go and get two goats. I will kill it and I will disguise you. Just follow me. So Jacob, if you read, if you read the chapter, you will understand that Jacob was resisting. And he was saying, no, mama, papa will know. Papa will know that I'm not Esau. No, just listen to me. Believe me and follow me. That was how scheming this mom was. Right? He was trying to devise a way to be able to get both the birthright and the blessing. And Rebecca and Jacob just went and followed mama. The obedient uh, filial son just went and followed mama and said, Okay, I'll go. He got two goats. Rebecca killed, cooked it. And here is what Jacob said. But look, Jacob replied, Esau is hairy. What am I going to do? 
Papa is going to recognize me. Instead of blessing me, he might curse me. So Rebecca says, no, then let the curse be on me. But just follow me. We are going to go to do this. Go out and get the goats for me. And he did. Rebecca went, and so Rebecca cooked the goats, prepared it in the way that Isaac loved. Pareho tong silang mag, mag ama, no? The way to their heart is through their stomachs. Both of them, Isaac and Esau, wanted the game, and all of them were... So, Rebecca prepared a delicious meal, and she took Esau's clothes, put it on Jacob, at hindi lang po yun. With everything that was exposed, he got the fur of goats, of a young goat, and covered it. Can you imagine how scheming it was? Tiba, daig ang CSI, FBI, at kung ano pang mga detective stories. Rebecca took some cloths of young goats, of skin of young goats. Ganon ka hairy si Iso, no? And covered every exposed area that Jacob had. She gave Jacob the meal and told him, "Go." Go to your father and get your blessing. And so Jacob went to Isaac. And Isaac said, My father, yes, who is that? It's Esau. I cannot believe Isaac not recognizing the voice. Unless, you know, it's Esau, daddy. Ginaya niya siguro yung bosses for him to be able to recognize it. But Jacob had, had his doubts. Because he had to ask, who are you? Esau or Jacob? Because remember, during this time, Isaac was old and his eyes were failing. Jacob said, I have caught the game. So here I am. Give me the blessing. So Jacob wondered, Ang bilis mo naman, anak. How did you get it so quickly? And look what Jacob's answer was. The Lord, your God, put them in my path. How many of us, when we're sinning, would point to God and tell Him because the Lord allowed it to happen? The Lord allowed me to sin. Kasi Lord, pinakilala mo pa sa akin eh. Dapat di mo na pinakilala. Jacob had the audacity to put God into the equation of the scheming and the cheating that they were doing. And then Isaac said to Jacob, Come closer so I can touch you. So true. Rebecca's, Rebecca's idea was true. It was happening. He was going to touch Jacob. So Jacob went closer to him and said, The voice is Jacob's, but the hands are Esau's. So he was, he was conflicted. Are you really Esau, my son? And Jacob said, Yes. He was already being given a chance to tell the truth and to confess. But he was obedient to Rebecca. He was obedient to mommy and said, Yes, I am Jacob. Yes, I am Jacob, daddy. How can you not recognize me? Sabi siguro, I know, I'm hairy. Jacob is not. And Isaac said, Now my son, bring me the wild game. Let me eat and then I will give you my blessings. And so, Jacob went. You, you, you hear the sound, the sound effects during this time? Jacob was going, approaching father, and bringing him the bowl of stew. May kasama pang wine at may kasama pang bread. The, 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 so the whole thing. So, Isaac ate, he drank wine that Jacob served him. I guess in Isaac's mind, there's something amiss here. It doesn't seem right. And then Isaac said to Jacob, Please come a little closer, son, and let me kiss you. So Jacob went over, kissed his father, and when Isaac caught the smell of his clothes, Si Iso ka nga! Hindi ka na naman nag-deodorant, anak! The smell of the game was the cue for Isaac because he knew that every time they would go out, they would smell like the sun and the animals and the wilderness themselves. And after that, as they said, the rest is history. Isaac gave the blessing to Jacob. 
And as soon as the blessing was given, Jacob exits and Esau comes, Daddy, Daddy, I have your game! And look at what, what, the, what the description of Moses was in writing it. Isaac began to tremble uncontrollably. He was so angry at what has just transpired. And he said, I just gave the blessings to Jacob. And Esau, hearing what his father had to say, he let out a loud and bitter cry. Oh, my father, bless me too. I've lost my birthright and now my blessing is gone as well. The birthright is a natural right that is non-negotiable will be given to the eldest. But a blessing is like a last will and testament. It can be optional as to what the giver is, the parent is going to give. And here, Esau was cheated of both. That's what he said. But he wasn't actually cheated of the first one. That was his choice. He gave up his right. But here, the blessing was being taken away from him because he was not worthy of the blessing anymore. So, mga kapatid, when the world and the promise of a future is set before us, what are we going to choose? For Esau, it was too late. But for us, for as long as you can breathe and enjoy the presence of God, the chance is there for you. Because our choices have consequences, and some of them so dire that you cannot turn away from it anymore. So what do we do? Focus on God and His promises. Esau could not turn back anymore. Esau could not go back and take back the better choice from the options presented before him. But if we focus on God and his promises, then we will know what choices we will make. Daily, choice after choice, options after options is presented before us. A lot of times, we want the easy way out. Easy, mabilis, everything is instant. But there's nothing that's easy. There's nothing that's instant. The future is something that you look far into the future. When choices are presented before us, make a wise choice, always, that you will be able to choose it's not something that you already have, but something that is better than what you have. A relationship with Christ gives us a lot of benefits. Immeasurable grace, mercies that we do not deserve, an, an eternity in heaven that you will not be able to measure. Life on earth, no matter if we live to 105, 110, 120, is still very short compared to eternity. Are you willing to give up a lifetime with the Lord, with a, hun with a minute of pleasure on an internet game, on a relationship that is not worthy? on bitterness planted in your heart, on unforgiveness that has been brewing in your heart and preventing you from getting the promises that God has given you. What is your bowl of stew? What is the bowl of stew that is presented before you? His plan will happen. What is it to you? Like Esau, are you going to give up and say, what does that birthright have to do with me now? What good is that promise? If 
I can have my simple joy now. God is in control. He will be in control. And the question is this. Are you in it for the long haul? Or are you going to trade your birthright to a bowl of stew? From heaven.